Hey guys, welcome. I am going to do a cloud effect pour and I'm going to be using paints that are very thin. These little cups are awesome. They're Lowy Buffy cups. I have a hard time saying that. Um, they're awesome. If you've ever tried any of their products, they're great. Okay, so I'm gonna go over all my colors with you after I show you how I mix. So first I'm going to pour in the Floetrol. And hopefully you can kind of see it's about up to there. Now this one is done with golden fluid acrylics. So it's a little more Floetrol because of that. I want this color to be, oops, I want it to be kind of in between. I got something stuck in my lid. In between the teal and the turquoise. So it's this is um, Golden's teal, and this is the cobalt turquoise. I kind of don't want it this light, and I don't want it this dark. So I'm just going to add like one little drop of the, well, two went in. <laughs> okay, mix that up real good first. Make sure I like the color. And I do want it a little darker. So I'm just gonna add two more drops. of the cobalt. All right, I'm still going to go a little bit darker. There we go. It's a little better. Okay, then I need to add water to thin it. I want my consistency to be to where the paint just goes right back into itself. There's, there's no mound, but it also doesn't indent when I pull it up. Because when your paint's like really thin, like if I pull it up really high, you'll see it's indenting. I just want it to go back into itself with no mound when I just barely pull it up. I don't want it to dent when I'm just barely pulling it up like this. I'm using a spoon because I thought it would be easier to see as it goes in. And it's best to do your water slowly. Also, I like to add a little bit of the Golden's GAC 800. So I just do a pretty good squirt of that. And that just helps with any crazing. Okay. You can see it's just like going right back into itself. It's not causing an indentation, but it's also not doing a mound. Um, then I'm also going to show you how I mix. So, um, this is like a little effect that you can put over the paint after you've poured, after you've tilted. So this would go on after you're done with tilting. So this is milk paint. It is, where is the color? Plaid. 
So, and then I'm gonna add, cause I want this color to be really, really light. So I'm adding a little bit of the, um, white paint to it. And now add the flow trowel. And the flow trowel is probably three to one instead of two to one. Same with my G the golden colors, it's more three to one. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more white. Oh, whoops, I am not want you guys to see that. <laughs> okay, I still think I want a little bit more white. I want this color to be really light. So I actually am going to add a little bit more flow trowel. I haven't decided if I'm actually going to use this. I probably will, but sometimes I just love the painting when I, after I tilt it and I don't want to add any other effects or colors to it. So we'll see what happens. The painting I'm going to do, I actually have to paint over I loved the painting, it dried, and I went to do a spray varnish on it. It was a new one. I was told it doesn't yellow, um, that it protects from the sun, and it says it protects from the sun, but the problem is, is it actually has a yellow tint to it. So on a paintings that have all that negative space, it's gonna cause this dingy yellow color. It was awful. I tried to see if I could paint over it and you know, it just didn't work. Okay, a little bit more water. You want all your paints and your base to all be the same consistency so that they all move together the same. That way you don't have any of those streaks coming down of one color because it's thinner and it, it's moving faster than the rest of the paint. All right, now I still kind of feel like I need a little more. It's almost causing a mound. So, all right, maybe that's good. All right, I think that's good. Now, this color right here, which I gotta check it, because they've been sitting for a minute. And always check your paints just before you're gonna paint so that in case they've dried out a little bit. But this color right here is the Burnt Sienna by Golden with the Raw Umber by Golden. And then I added just a little bit of the Nickel Azel Gold. I wanted this yellowy brown. And then I put iridescent bronze in it, and that's why you're getting that shimmer. It's a little bit more water. Let's see if you guys see on that. See how it's just going back into itself? There's no mound that doesn't... You're seeing kind of a trace because of the shimmer of the 
iridescent gold, but it's not actually sitting on top and then going in. Okay, and then this one is, where did I put that? Oh, it's over here. So it's um, Amsterdam's Oxide Black. And I added some Golden's Payne's Gray to it because I don't like black to have that real dingy look. This just kind of gives it that slightly blue tinge to the black and just kind of brightens it up. And that looks good. I don't know if you guys can see the consistency in that one. All right, and then this one right here is Payne Gray by Golden, and it has the black in it by Amsterdam. And so it, it's just a little bit of black, just to darken this color up a little bit. Okay. And then this one right here is Nickel Azel Gold by Golden. And I love this color because if I was to add more of the, if I add more of this, it's going to start going more towards the color that you're seeing here. But you can just do a little bit and it'll be kind of a bright yellow. You do more and it goes more of this. Um, I think of a sunflower when I look at this color. So yeah, you can change the color and that's with all the goldens. The more you put in, the darker that color gets. It's very pigmented, so you don't have to add a ton depending on how dark you want it. Okay, so this one right here, I added the Primary Magenta by Amsterdam. I also put in the Violet the, and the Magenta. I put both of those in there. The violet has a, it's a little darker and that's what I wanted to do is just darken this up. Okay, let's see if you guys can see that. Hope that's a good color to see it. And then this one right here is iridescent um, gold by Golden Fluids, um, and it's the fine. It I love this. It you, as you can see on here, yeah, you can see through that. So you can have your teal on there and see, and the gold and the teal will show through this gold. It's my favorite gold. That and, of course, Deco Arts 24 karat. All right. So I mixed up some white already, but I'm going to show you guys how I mix the white. So up to here, I've already put it in, is um, Artist Loft's golden, or not golden, <laughs> Artist Loft's um, fluid acrylic. I put that to there and then I'm going to add the Bears Satin Enamel. And I'm going to go to about there. So it's it's pretty much half of the Artist Loft's white and then half of the Bear. I'm not pouring this, I'm putting it in with my spatula, so bear with me here. I don't want it up on the rim, so it's hard to shut the can. Okay. So there I have, I actually might have gone a little more, but that's, 
the Satin Enamel by Bear. And let me show you the can. This is the one I like to use. And then I'm going to add the GAC 800 to it. Um, let me move these so you guys can see. The tip of this is clogged a little bit. Okay. And then I do flow trial. And I do like about to there in flow trial. And I like to mix it up really good before I start adding water so that the two paints are mixed really well. So you want to scrape your sides, bring that bottom paint up. Okay. Now I'm just going to dump a little bit at first because it kind of takes a lot. And, and like I said, you want to make sure this is the same consistency as your paints. When you do that, it makes everything just flow together. You see how that's leaving a mound right now. So I'm going to try to, like I said, not do a whole lot of editing. The only time I'm going to stop the camera is when I need to get you on the canvas because I'm going to try to raise the camera higher because it is a large canvas. It's a 20 by 40. And the only way to make it so you can see is by raising it up. See, it takes a lot of water. So what I did is I'm having a hard time seeing for sure if it's right, so I <clears throat> wanted to see if the if it went away immediately or if it stayed. Okay, Add just a little bit more water and that will be good.
All right, now I just need to check my paint that I had sitting. Yeah, that needs a little bit of water. A lot of times I have these all mixed up in a jug, but I want to show you guys how I do it, so you can't see as well if it's in a jug. <laughs> Um, after this video, I actually have another one that will be coming out and needs some editing done, but it's pretty cool. It's, I did it and it kind of looks like a geode. So I'm excited to show you guys that one. Okay. All the paints are good. I am going to pause you guys for a second while I clean this up and get the canvas up on the table and get you um, the camera situated. All right, so my husband ended up getting a phone call and uh, for with work that he had to take do a meeting or whatever, and it's way too close and you'd be able to hear it the whole time. So I have to do the voiceover now. So I just sped this up while I am putting that base on. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know why I'm losing my voice. Went fishing over the weekend and kind of just <laughs> lost my voice. There's a lot of fires um, here in Utah plus California. We get kind of their smoke from their fires. So anyway, I'm putting the paints on the canvas, as you can see, just adding my little puddles. That's the brown. I just wanted a little bit of it, so I add that instead of pouring it. I add it with the spoon. And just putting those puddles in and then I will tilt that's that nickel azo gold it's such a cool color I ended up calling this painting fractured um, one of the painting groups I belong to I was asking people for help on naming this painting and as soon as somebody said it looked like like a broken like leg or something, I was like, yep, that's what I'm naming it, fractured. So um, I end up tilting this a little more. There's a little too much paint on the canvas. But I'm just adding those little details to the, to it by like, pulling out and when you pull out with your palette knife always make sure you wipe your knife afterwards because it will have base paint on it and it will put white in the spot you go to pull out this is where I like oh I've got way too much paint on the canvas I could tell by when I touched it But I am going to add right there is the cloud effect. Um, you'll see it better after I tilt this again. I just had to get some of that extra paint off and I actually like it better after I tilted it. These colors blended so beautiful. I, I really, really love this painting. Um, I actually go to a farmer's market to sell my paintings and I got a huge um, order for three 
of this size of canvases. So I'm excited to do that commission piece. He wants it done in a um, triptych. So I will definitely find a way to film it. It's going to be in my garage because it's, it's going to be a big commission piece. So I'm excited. All right, so I'm just adding all these little touches. So when you add the cloud effect, you take that on your palette knife and you just layer it across and it will cause this really cool like puffy cloud look in the paint. And then you take your other colors and you add that on top. And it's it's a really cool effect. By doing this though, you, you're adding more paint. And so you'll see sometimes I'll take my palette knife and set it right on top and kind of like pull some excess paint off. But I also take a pipette and what you do is you squeeze the pipette and then put it into the paint and let go and suck that, suck that paint up. And that will help too, so you're not, it doesn't like expand way more than you want it to. Because that cloud of that cloud effect, that melt paint, it will actually like start to spread out. And if you don't want it to take up a big portion, you just kind of suck up some like like I am. Right there. I'm just sucking up a little bit off to the side, controlling how big that gets. I actually really fight with this one. I don't know why that just that one little spot right there. Um, it just never ended up looking how I wanted, but in the end I get it. So here I'm just adding more and it just gives a really cool little touch to your painting. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched Sarah Taylor. She's an amazing artist. She she does it. She calls it a cloud over. And it's just, I love it. It's a beautiful technique. Um, you can see, like, I'm just taking those colors, adding it to it. And then I'll, I'll take my palette knife and kind of set it on top. And when I when I'm doing that also, I'm, it's kind of making the colors just kind of mesh together. That's not the word I'm looking for. <laughs> no, kind of blend together. It's been a long few days. I've got some orders to do, and I've been wanting to get this video out so. Forgive me for not having enough sleep. <laughs> Plus, I went fishing and totally got skunked. Man, we go fishing. We catch fish. We always catch our limit. We get these big, nice, beautiful rainbow trout. Nothing this last weekend. I was just, I don't know what's going on. But hopefully this next weekend we'll do good. All right, I'm going to let you guys finish watching this. Um, everybody take care, enjoy your life, and I'll be back at the end. Thank you so much.
right, here's our finished results. Um, right there is the cloud effect. You see how it, well, all right, there. <laughs> I didn't stay there very long. I'm going to show it to you, though. So right here is the cloud effect. See how it kind of goes all puffy? It's just, oh, it's so cool. I love it. All right. Well, you guys, I will catch you next time. Thank you so much. Um, help me out. And please subscribe and like. It's free. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.